Let's bring in Trump campaign senior advisor Jason Miller right now. Jason, thank you for joining us this morning. And let me let me start with a question about your personal health. Five of the nine people who participated in the president's debate prep, including Chris Christie, who works for ABC right now, have now tested positive for COVID. Are you still negative? When was the last time you were tested? Uh, yes, and thank you for having me on this morning, George. I have tested negative, uh, as has my entire family, so we're very thankful for that. Um, and that was on Friday uh, when I took my last test, and so I'm continuing to social distance and wear a mask uh, and be very careful and wash my hands and keep distance from folks, use hand sanitizer. Uh, so very thankful that I tested negative, as did Stephen Miller and Mayor Giuliani. And for those who did test positive, uh, namely President Trump, uh, we're hoping that he gets back on his feet in no time at all, and he seems to be doing very well. Uh, you know, George, I did have the opportunity to speak with the president for about a half hour yesterday, uh, both myself and Bill Steppi and our campaign manager, and the president sounded pretty good. Uh, he said he was doing very well. He's getting back on his feet and uh, cracking jokes and asking questions about the campaign and grilling us about when we're going to have some new TV ads to show him. Uh, so he's feeling good and talking about this, but he said a couple of really important things I want to make sure uh, that I share with the American public that are watching this morning. Number one, that we're going to defeat this virus. President Trump personally is going to defeat it is a nation we're going to defeat it and get life back to normal get this vaccine but then also our campaign is going to defeat it and i think when president trump gets out of the white house or excuse me, out of the uh, gets back to the white house and back on the campaign trail that's going to be a slingshot taking us forward but he said something else uh, that was very important george and that's to be careful to make sure that folks are washing their hands to make sure they're using hand sanitizer uh, to make sure they're wearing a mask if you can't socially distance these are all important things and reminders that president trump told us it's good to hear the president saying that now. I mean, there have been real questions about whether he's been taking it seriously enough up until his diagnosis. In fact, we have a new poll out this morning that with Ipsos. It says nearly three in four Americans, 72 percent, say the president didn't take the risk of getting COVID seriously enough and didn't take the appropriate precautions when it came to his personal health. What do you say to them? Well, I disagree with that. I look at the early action that the president took, both with closing down the country and making sure that uh, we stopped foreign travelers from China and from Europe at a time when he received a lot of criticism from the political left, folks saying that it was xenophobic or saying that it was racist. Obviously, he shut down the country uh, for two weeks and then for an additional month uh, to go and keep us safe. And what that did was that, that flattened the curve that allowed us to make sure that we started developing these therapeutics, that we started getting the vaccine developed, that we got the ventilators, 100,000 ventilators built. And I, and George, I think there's a really important point here is that President Trump had to take this head on. He had to get out there as the leader, not just of the country, but of the free world and take this head on. This is a, a general in the field type moment that he couldn't just stay upstairs hidden in the Lincoln bedroom or in the White House. He couldn't stay hidden in his basement saying, I'm going to shut down forever. People in this country, George, want to get life. J J Jason, back to that, that's true. The president, the president had to take to go it. And do that. The president had to take it head on, but he didn't have to ha hold rallies where people did not social distance, where did not wear masks. He didn't have to mock uh, former Vice President Joe Biden for wearing a mask and reporters who wore a mask. He didn't have to uh, continue to go to event after event without wearing a mask. But I would, uh, again, George, I'd push back on that because President Trump is one of the most tested people in the entire country. And there's a lot that we still don't know about this virus. So let me give folks an example of, uh, as someone who spends a lot of time with the president, the protocol and the things that I go through. So if I'm going to be spending time with the president or other team members, first of all, we're tested uh, beforehand. And there's a, about a full hour space from the time that we're tested until we make sure that we're in the clear. We keep distance from the president at all times. I closest I ever get to the president is about uh, eight feet, maybe six feet, usually a pretty solid distance back. A lot of times it's more like 10 feet. And we make sure that any anyone has their temperature checked. People are washing their hands. They're using hand sanitizer. So even with all of these things in place, we've seen that where President Trump uh, did contract COVID, uh, but he's one of the most safe people that's out there. Uh, and obviously, if he's in a place where he can't socially distance, then we have seen him wearing a mask. We have seen him encouraging people, whether be on Twitter, whether it be with email, whether it be from his own voice, saying, be careful as you're out there. These are important things. So folks who come to our rallies, for example, their temperatures are all checked. They're given masks. They're urged to be careful as well. We've done that in the past. We're going to continue doing that as we go forward. You know, but more broadly, we've all seen the rallies without the mask, the Rose Garden event without the mask. The president's family refused to wear masks at the debate. And the president seemed pretty proud of that at Tuesday's debate. Let's listen. I don't wear masks like him. Every time you see him, he's got a mask. He could be speaking 
200 feet away from it, he shows up with the biggest mask I've ever seen. And I'll have 25, 35,000 people show up at airports. We use airports. Are you not worried about the We have disease a lot issues, of people. Sir. Well, so far, we have had no problem whatsoever. We've Come had on. no negative effect. And we've well, had 35, 40,000 right. people at to... these rallies. Hasn't the Cavalier approach to mask and social distancing at these rallies been a mistake? Will it change going forward? Uh, again, I'll push back on that and say it hasn't been uh, cavalier at all. We take it very seriously. It's why we give everyone coming to rallies or to events, we give them a mask. We check their temperature. You know, I'd say that with regard to Joe Biden, I think too often he's used the mask as a prop. Uh, mask is very important, but even if he's, uh, he could be uh, 20, 30 feet away from the nearest person and still have the mask on, uh, that's not uh, going to change anything uh, that's out there. But also we've seen with, uh, with Joe Biden, I mean, we can't all just stay in our basement for the rest of our lives. We have to get out there and live our lives and take this on, develop the vaccine, develop more therapeutics and defeat it. Americans, George, want to get life back to normal. That is the driving thing that everyone's lives right now. They want to get life back to normal. You can't just stay hidden in your basement the entire time. Everyone wants to get life back to normal. There's no question about that. But has the president taken it too far? One example, on Thursday, the president went ahead with his fundraiser in Bedminster, even after the White House knew that Hope Hicks had tested positive. Why wasn't that event canceled? Well, again, I'd say that uh, the news, as we saw from the public reports, the news of when they saw about Hope Hicks, um, as soon as that happened, then President Trump was tested. Uh, he did not get his test back until later on Thursday evening. Uh, you know, it is notable that anyone who comes to an event, uh, such as the fundraiser, those at Bedminster, is tested. They do have their temperature taken. Uh, no, they are but hold, required. Hold on, to Jason. This is the point is the not president. the president's test isn't the point. We know that Jared Kushner, Dan Scavino, Kaylee McEnany were told to stay back. The president had been in close contact with Hope Hicks. Why would he go forward with this fundraiser after knowing he'd been in close contact with somebody who had just tested positive? Well, George, what I can't speak to, since I'm not part of White House operations, I'm not part of the White House medical unit, is the exact how much time he was spending with Hope and in the proximity for these things. I can't speak to that. I got to let the White House go and do that. What I can speak to is that I think it was very smart that the White House medical team did take President Trump to Walter Reed as a precautionary measure. Uh, obviously, as we've seen from the reports, that there were some concerns with how he was doing. We should all be very happy that President Tr Trump is doing much better today, and he was doing much better yesterday. Yesterday. So he's on the recovery uh, right now. I think he'll be back in short order. He's anxious to get back out there on the campaign trail. And that's what I can speak to, having spoken with the president at length yesterday and also seen the briefing from his doctors out in front of Walter Reed. We all want him to get well as quickly as possible. Let's talk about the campaign. Even before this diagnosis, uh, the president was behind. And there's a new poll from the Wall Street Journal and NBC News out today showing that Joe Biden is leading 53 to 39, a 14 point lead. How can you come back from that kind of a deficit? Uh, well, we did it in 2016 uh, because, number one, a lot of times these polls are inaccurate. I remember a uh, ABC Washington Post poll that came out just a week or a week and a half before the election in 2016 that said that we were down double digits and now President Trump is in the White House. Uh, so uh, clearly these polls, these national polls sometimes are inaccurate uh, or they're not sampling the right people or they're not getting the right spreads. As we look at the battleground states, uh, what you need to get to 270, we feel very good about our positioning. In particular, I think our strength out west, uh, both with Arizona and Nevada, is looking very good. Uh, in Florida, we continue to look good. Numbers are con Our lead is growing, as we see in North Carolina and Georgia, from internal numbers. Pennsylvania is going to be tight. Michigan is going to be tight. The whole upper Midwest is what this thing could come down to. And so we're launching this week, while President Trump is on the recovery, Operation Mega, both with the vice president, the first family, dozens of our key supporters and our surrogates. We're going to be fanning out all over the country following the vice president's debate on Wednesday. Wednesday, also combined with a number of virtual events. We're going to have our first big kickoff virtual event Monday night. So the president was excited to hear this Operation Mega that we're going to uh, get everyone around the country and, and really pick up the, the banner and campaign until he can get back out there himself. Jason Miller, thanks for your time this morning. Thank you, George. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.